Today we're going to be going over my entire Pokemon collection in Pokemon Go, but before we do that, we just recently hit 175k on YouTube, which is a massive achievement. Thank you to everybody who subscribed, who's liked, who's commented, who just watches all the videos. It really means a lot. And we're getting very close to our goal of 200k subscribers by the end of the year. But now it's time to dive into the collection, and this is what you see when you see my top CP Pokemon. Obviously the Mega Rayquaza isn't always on top, but I have one now because I was using it. And if we click on it really quick, you can see the name says Hundo Osako and it has the background. This is indeed a Hundo that we got on the final ball. We got very, very lucky in getting this. I really thought it was going to run, or I thought I was going to have to use my Master Ball, but I'm very glad I didn't have to do that, because, I mean, look at that background with it. It just, it looks like a big Japanese dragon with that castle in the background. Absolutely love this thing. Not only that, we've got so many cool things up here. I mean, we've got a Hundo Mewtwo. That's a shiny 98% Regigigas. Shadow Mewtwo's that are both really good. This one I got very recently. It's a 98%, and then this is the one I got during the Go Fest Worldwide, where Victini was available. Admittedly, I don't quite remember Remember which one that was, but I was very happy to get it. Because usually my luck with special researches are terrible, so the fact that we got this as my first ever Shadow Mewtwo, I loved it. But yeah, there's also a Hundo Origin Palkia, a Schlundo of both Groudon and Kyogre. We've got a Shiny Shadow Mewtwo up there, a Hundo Origin Dialga with a normal Hundo Dialga, Hundo Zekrom, Shiny 98% Reshiram, but it's still a functional Shundo from what I've been told. And just so much more here that we're going to be diving into later on, but man, we've put a lot of work into this account. And and you all know that I love my shiny Pokemon, and as you can see here, we're at 3,947 shinies in the game. Now, I would be at 4,000, but I have recently deleted a few shinies, and honestly, I still need to delete a few more of them, because I really need space. But nonetheless, we've had a very solid grind, as you can see in the last couple of events, and including this one, I'm very happy we got this XXL shiny Zerua. But not only do I love my shinies, I'm also trying to get one of every single shiny in my collection in the game, and that's why I have the shiny living decks here, and I can organize it by generations. So in total we have 844 Pokemon in here, and this does include forms and such. We have all 151 shiny Pokemon in the Kanto region. There are no regional variants in here because I put those regional variants in the generation in which they showed up in, but as you can tell, we've been going hard on them and we have every single one of them. Some of them are pretty good as well. There are some Shundos in here, but for the most part, they don't have the greatest IVs. Especially this shiny Mew, sadly. This shiny Mew is terrible. I mean, it's better than my first Mew, but I really wish this turned out better. For Gen 2, we have 121 Shinies. Now, I would say that we are completely done with this, but unfortunately, technically we aren't, and you'll see why in just a moment. And that's because of Unknown. There we go. We have all the letters that have currently come out, minus Unknown J, and I do believe that there's another one that I don't quite have yet, but I mean, for the most part, we do have a good majority of them. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J doesn't exist, neither does K at the moment. K has never been released, but we've got an L. In fact, we've gotten a few L's. M, N, O, P, no Q yet, but we have the R, S, T, U, V. W hasn't been released yet, but we did get the X in Mexico. Very happy we got this thing. Y was released a few times, Z hasn't come out, and we have exclamation point. And luckily the question mark will be coming out during GoFest of this year, and fingers crossed we get it. Though I do have three GoFests to try to get it. So hopefully we get at least one. But other than the unknowns, we have every other shiny Gen 2 Pokemon, and I've been very, very fortunate to get my hands on every one of them. And of course, the mythical at the very end is very bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least it has a 14 at attack, which is cool. But if we just swipe this way, we have a Shundo Ho-Oh, so that's pretty nice. And for Generation 3, we have every single Pokemon, including all the different forms, like Wurmple all the way to Beautifly and Dustox. And we've also gotten pretty lucky with a few other things as well. Hoentor was very good to us, but also also, the GoFests were really good to us, too. Technically, I don't have every single shiny Spinda yet. I've been trying to go for them, but I also haven't been putting a lot of work into this. But other than that, as you can see, we have pretty much everything, including the cast forms. Yep, there we go. We have the normal one here, we got the sunny, we got the rainy, and we got the snowy, and we got this one in Japan. I'm very glad we got this one, because it definitely doesn't snow where I'm from, and foggy weather hardly ever shows up. And we also got the Kecleon as well, which is a really fun one. But yeah, 
Pretty fun generation. This is my favorite generation. Gen 1 and Gen 3 are my favorite generations, technically. But yet again, guess what? That shiny mythical at the end was not the best. But I still love it. I really like shiny Jirachi. It's a very solid shiny. And as we move on to Generation 4, I'm happy to say we have every single Gen 4 shiny Pokemon that has been released, including the forms. As you can see, we have all the Burmies and the Wormadams, including the Motham at the end. Also the Cherubi and both of its evolutions, the Sunny Day and the Cloudy Day form. Both of the Shelloses as well, including the Stunky. We got the Babies as well. We finally got the Mime Jr. in LA, and I could not believe that I hatched this. I literally almost lost my mind. But yeah, pretty fun time. Though I will say that I am technically wrong. I don't have every single Shiny of Gen 4. I still do not have Rotom. I hope to get a Rotom in the future. I'm sure it'll be showing up in the Go Fests for the photo bomb. so fingers crossed we get lucky there. And yet again, the Shiny Mythical at the very end is not the best, though this one okay. And if I were to power it up, unfortunately it goes over for Great League. I was really hoping that this one would be like really good for Great League, but nonetheless it's still a really nice mythical. And this one took the least amount of time to actually get, which was nice. Now for the Unova region, I will say that I am missing, unfortunately, some shinies, some that have just recently been released. And then there's obviously some that haven't been released yet, but as you can see, we got the Pidove line done. We've gotten a lot of the forms out of the way, including some regionals that you can't normally get where I'm from. But we got a lot of them, including the fossils and such. And of course, we got the Zerua and the Zoroark. I'm very happy with these absolutely beautiful shinies. But there are a few that have evaded me as of right now. But I mean, we're doing pretty good. We have 141 of these shinies in here, so can't really complain. Plus, Unova Tour is probably next February, and I'm sure I'll smash those out in no time at all. The Kalos region has had a few of its shinies released. In fact, they've had a lot of their shinies released recently, and I'm happy to say I have every one of them, including getting every single shiny Furfru that is currently in the game. But we've got the normal form here, followed up by the heart trim, which you can only get during the Valentine's Day event. Usually it lasts like a week, but recently I think this one only lasted like three days or three or four days. Followed up by the star trim that you can only get in the Asia Pacific region, like Japan, Taiwan, Korea. After that, we've got the diamond trim that can only be found in, I believe, Africa and Europe. I don't think it can go anywhere else, but I think those are the two places. Maybe India as well. I think you can get it in India. But anyways, we also have the debutant form. This is exclusive to North, Central, and South America. And then we've got the matron trim. This is a worldwide trim. Everybody can get this one, as well as the dandy trim that is also worldwide. After that, we've got the Lorraine form. You can only get this in France, and I've had a lot of people try to get them outside, just like on the border of France. You have to pretty much be in France to get this one. And then we've got the Kabuki form. You can only get this one in Japan. And last but not least, we've got the Pharaoh form, which we can only get in Egypt. And I had a great time getting every one of these forms. You should definitely check out that video when you get a chance. So yeah, we got the Esper and Meowstic lines. We got all those fairies and stuff. We've been very fortunate and very lucky with all these shinies. Not a lot of these have really been giving me a lot of trouble. I will say that the Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist family is going to take me a little bit of time. I do have the costume variants, but I don't really count costume variants when it comes down to the shiny living decks. I kind of want them to be just purely non-costumed, even though I'm kind of lying because I already have an XXL Pumpkaboo with the hat here, but that's just a filler until we actually get one without a hat. Pretty much done here. No shiny mythical for this one just yet. Just like Gen 5, really, but yeah, we haven't had them out just yet. But all in all, we're doing really good with this generation. As for the Alola region, we are getting a few of the shinies this year. Year. I mean, we've had these Alolan forms for quite a few years now, but now these starters are only just coming out in 2024. But we've had a few of these from the previous year. Very glad I got this Oracorio. I'm hoping to get the other forms during the other Go Fests. I hear they're going to be showing up, but this is my local Oracorio. But after that, I mean, we have almost everything. I'm still missing Robombi, the evolution of Cutie Fly, but we've been very lucky with the Rock Ruffs. We have the normal, the daytime, the nighttime, and the dust forms. And so far, I don't think I'm missing anything else, though I might be wrong on that. I think there might be one or two things I'm missing here. But all in all, it's a pretty solid collection. The Galar region so far only has the regional variants. We don't have any pure just Galar Pokemon, unless you include Berserker and obviously Obstagoon to that. But technically they're evolutions of regional variants. So yeah, we have every single one of them, which is fantastic, but we don't have anything else because nothing else has been released. And for Gen 9, we have pretty much every single shiny that's been released because there hasn't been a lot of them. But we've got the Wooper, we got the Lechonk line, we have Bombardier, Annihilate, love this one because it's a level one and I just love this Pokemon so much. And lastly, we have Clodzire, which is a really fun meme Pokemon and it's also surprisingly pretty useful. I almost completely forgot about the Hisuian region, even though I could call it just Gen 4.5 really because it's continuing off of Sinnoh, but we have every single one of them that have currently been released into 
the game, and I'm really, really happy about the Basculin, mostly because we didn't have normal Basculin. And it took me like 300 fish before I finally got this shiny. But yeah, all in all, we have every single shiny that's been released, and hopefully we'll be able to get the new ones whenever they come out. We're still missing like a small handful of Hisuian variants, but I'm sure we're gonna get them eventually. Hopefully, at least. I believe all we're missing is Lilligant, and I want to say Hisuian, Zerua, and Zorark, really. Probably gonna get that Lilligant during a raid day kind of thing, and then the Zorark and Zerua may come out for Unova Tour. Kind of makes sense since Zorark's already in there, but they could also do it for a holiday event or some sort of mischief thing, who knows. And last but not least, we do have the Meltan line. I put Jin N.A. in here because some people think they're Galar, some people think that they're Alolan. I like to think it's the Pokemon Go generation, seeing that we got these shinies in the Pokemon Go app technically first. So it's the Pokemon Go region, if that's even really a thing, but we do have both of them. Next up, we've got the shiny costume Pokemon, which is something that a few of you have been asking about, so here we go. We have the Party Hat Bulbasaur, including the Visor Bulbasaur. I never got lucky with the Shedinja Bulbasaur. Moving on to Charmander, though, we've had a lot more luck with that one. Charmander has the Party Hat. We have ourselves the Visor, the Pikachu Visor. We got the Cubone Charmander. And we're able to evolve the Party Hat into a Charmeleon and a Charizard, so I'm glad I have both of those. I love that I have this. This is a Shundo Squirtle Squad Squirtle that I got very lucky with because they had a mess up in Australia. So we had basically two Community Day classics with Squirtle, and I got very lucky at the very end and got this one, and I really wanted this. Just because of the memory. I watched the anime as a kid, and I loved the Squirtle Squad, so I'm glad I got this Shundo. As you can see, we have a few of them. I might need to get rid of some of those, including the Party Hat, the Visor one. I got this one in a trade, but I'm really happy with it. This is the Yaw Mask Hat, I believe. And then we have the evolutions of both War Turtle and Blastoise with the Party Hat and the glasses. We also have a Shundo Boater Free. We call it Boater Free because it has a bow. Hopefully we'll be able to Gigantamax this in the future, but yeah, I used to have a ton more of these. I deleted a lot of these Butterfrees. But we have the Party Raticate, and then we have literally every single one of these costume Pikachus. I don't have every one of them, but I have a lot of them. Still missing a few, though, unfortunately, and hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on them. By the way, if you have a shiny Libre Pikachu and you're willing to trade it to me, please let me know. I would gladly take it from you. I would really love that. But yeah, we have a lot of these, and I'll show you the balloon ones and the shirt ones in just a second, but let's just move on to the Raichus here. We also got the Party Nidorinos. We got the Costume Halloween Vulpix and Nine. I love these. Got the New Year's Jigglypuff, the Dapper Diglett, and Doug Trio. This one had to be traded to me. I did not get lucky with the Meloetta Hat Ponyta. But as for the Slowpoke, we had a lot of luck with them. And I've actually traded these away just to get rid of them because I had so many. We got the 2021 Slowbro, which is really neat. We've got the Party Hat Gengars, including the Witch Hat Gengar, Sushi Gengar, which is nice. And we also got ourselves this one, which is the Banette costume. I really like the Gengar costumes. They did a really good job with these. Managed to get one of these Cubones with the flower crowns. I keep forgetting the name of these flowers, but they're really nice looking. Quite a few flower crown chances, including the bowed Lapras, which will be showing up for the brand new Go Fests coming out this year. As for the Evolutions, I'll put those in a separate part in this video, but I mean, just know that we're doing really good on those. We also have the Satchel Aerodactyl, which is a pretty fun one, but obviously the Cowboy Hat Snorlax is like one of the best costumes they've ever come out with. There's also the Bow Dragonite. Still think it's a missed opportunity. They should have given this the satchel like in the first movie. New Year's Hoot Hoot and Noctowl. We've got a few of these Pichus for sure. We've got the Togepi Flower Crowns. We got the Togetic. We've got the Beanie Wooper. Love the Beanie Wooper and the Quagsire, but I really like the Wooper more. I think it really works with the Wooper. 2022 Slowking, which is pretty nice, including the Party Wobbuffet. Sneasel with the glasses and the Beanie. We got the Bow Deli Bird. We got the Jingle Bell Stantler. Probably one of the best holiday events shinies we got. Bow Smoochum, Flower Crown Blissey. Again, I got traded this Zigzagoon because I just could not get this one to save my life. And that fashion event really gives us a lot of these basically top hats and stuff. Like, these are very common in the wild and they have a very high shiny rate. We also got this Flower Crown Duskull, which I really like this one as well. Again, I like this flower a lot. It really fits. And we got the evolutions for it as well. Dust Noir is just a little further down. A few of these Absols with the sunglasses. We got ourselves the Scarf Sveal, and I called it Redemption because I lost my first one by accident disengaging with it for a clip, and then it despawned, which sucked, so I'm really glad I got this thing. And I'm really happy that I have all of these. We have the Seno hats for Turtwick for both the male and the female character, and we also have it for Chimchar and Piplup, even though these are the Halloween hats for the Piplup, but there we go, we have the Seno hats there. We've got the top hat Shinx as well. We got a few of these, I guess, Halloween hat Drift Blims. We've never had these again after the first time they came out. 
Flower Crown Benary and Low Pony. We've got the Flower Crown Happinis. We've got the Bro Gunk. Love the Bro Gunk. And of course, the Toxa Broke, I think. I don't know exactly what people call this one. Here's the Flower Crown Dust Noir. Really like this shiny. I'm glad it didn't just stay red. I like this dark gray. We've got the Collared Blitzels. We got the Flower Crown Cottony, which is a brand new one. Sadly, didn't get a second one to evolve it into the Cottony, but eventually we'll get one. Cup Shoes with the bow. Bear Tick with the bow. We got those Pumpkaboos, and that is all of them. That's 406 shiny costume Pokemon. And it would have been more if I hadn't deleted some of these, because I've definitely gotten rid of some, because nobody really asks me for these, surprisingly. It's not for everybody, though. I like shiny costume Pokemon. I think it's a fun grind, but not everybody likes it. But as I said, I'm going to show you all the evolutions now. Even though there's technically Flower Crown Pikachu and Raichu in here, we do also have the Eevee. We got the Vaporeon, Jolteon, Flareon. Got very lucky. I only had to do one for each of them. And then we've got Pichu here, which isn't an evolution, but it is later in the dex line, so that's why it's showing up here. And then we've got Espeon level one. It's a really nice one. We got Umbreon, we got Leafeon, Glaceon, and of course, Sylveon. So we have every one of those flower crowns. But not only do we have all the flower crowns, we have every one of the holiday hats as well. And I'm very happy about it. Like, I can't believe I got lucky enough to finish this whole line. And I do like this one, but technically there are still more I need to get. There's the Sakura line, which is the new flower crown line. And this one is probably gonna be the hardest line to complete. This is the City Safari Eevee, with the safari hat, and I only have one of them. And I've now been to three city safaris, so I feel like this is going to be probably the hardest shiny Eevee line to complete, so hopefully we'll get lucky with that in the future. And as promised, here are all of the Air Adventures Pikachus that are currently in the game. This one is from Bali. It has the black, red, and golden balloons. Love that, including the Batik shirt, which is neat. Also, apparently there's going to be an event in Surabaya, I believe, and there might be two other locations in Indonesia that are going to get these. So if you live in Indonesia and you don't have this yet, don't worry, it might be coming to you soon. But after these Bali Chews, we got the Jeju Pikachus, which you can get in Jeju, South Korea. Also, I should mention that the balloons are no longer in the game anymore. You can only find the shirt Pikachus hanging out. The balloon ones only hang out there for about a week, or at least the duration of the event itself. Sometimes they're available ahead of time by like a couple days, and other times they're not. I really don't understand why they do that. And then after that, we've got the Singapore Pikachu, which has the pink and purple and goldish balloons. They look nice, including the purple shirt, which looks really nice. And after the Singapore Pikachu, we've got the Taiwan Pikachu, which I got in Taipei, Taiwan specifically. And of course, there are balloons for that one as well, which are pink, green, and gold and yellow, basically. But then there were two that I had to trade for, mostly because the world was shut down at the time, and Japan was definitely not letting people in at the time. And these are from Okinawa. This one is the white-shirted Pikachu from Okinawa, and then it has a red, orange, gold, and yellow balloon set. And I know that these are legit because I got them from Japanese players that actually had pictures of them at the event at the time, so I'm glad that they showed me that proof to prove that they weren't actually acquired through nefarious means. So yeah, that's every single one of them so far. I'm really happy I've been able to attend these events too, because they're a lot of fun. If you can make it to an Air Adventures event, you'll really enjoy them. They're a lot of fun. A lot of you have also asked about my Shundos, so here they all are. This is the most recent one, and we'll go back to our first one. So we've got the Chansey here, which we got during the Calm Day. We also got this Charizard during the Classic. We got the Squirtle Squad from the Research. And then we've got the Ho-Oh from a raid. We got this Groudon from a lucky trade, followed up by this one, which was from a mega raid. Got very lucky with this one. And then we've got the Boater Free Shundo. We've got the Gigalith from Community Day. We got this from a research day. Really glad to have this one because this was a really fun one. And then we got this one from Community Day. This one's from Community Day as well. This one is from a Community Day. This one was from my incense on Community Day. Literally the first shiny of the entire Community Day was a Shundo, which was insane. And then we've got ourselves from a community day, from a lucky trade, obviously, followed up by the first ever community day Shundo I ever got. And that is the first ever Shundo I ever got was a Porygon. And it's a nice Shundo to get. I like the colors on it. And here are all of my shiny shadows. I have almost every single one of them, minus Arbok. As you can see, I do have the Ekans here, but I never got a second one. And I never got coughing or wheezing, sadly, from James. But other than that, we have every single one of them that are currently in the game, minus one more Trap Inch and two Katnias. Those those have just recently come out, so I haven't been lucky enough to get them yet, but hopefully we'll be lucky. But 160 shiny shadows is pretty darn good, and as you can see, we went hard on a few of them, and for some reason, some of them absolutely loved us. Next up, let's dive into my hundos. As you can see, I have 627 hundos. I could probably transfer some of them, but we have quite a few fun ones. Obviously, I've shown you this one earlier, but we've got Mewtwo here, we've got the Origin Palkia, we've got the Shlundos, Hundo Origin Dialga as well, we got the normal one, We've got the 
Necrom there, our Shundos of these, Nihiligo, very glad I got the Nihiligo, and then yeah, we've got a few more Ultra Beasts and a few more Shundos. We've definitely gone hard, we've also been very lucky and we've gotten quite a few Legendary Hundos. I actually didn't know I had this Hundo, that's freaking awesome, I literally didn't know, but we also have this Shadow Hundo. Speaking of which, let me show you all my Shadow Hundos. So far I'm at eight Shadow Hundos. The first one ever was actually the Salamance, but we also got the Shadow Hundo Suicune, which is honestly one of the rarest things I have in my collection. Until Shadow Suicune comes to Shadow Raids, which it will be coming out probably next month. But for now, it's still probably one of a kind. There may be one or two other people out there that have them, but I've never seen anybody say they have one. But after that, we've got this Miss Magius I got from a Grunt. We also got this Gardevoir in South Korea, which is one of the best fairy types in the entire game, followed up by this Nidoking, which isn't really useful, but I love Nidoking. It's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. And then we got this Sableye from a raid, which was really cool. And then we got this Rhyperior. And I believe the last one right here is this Crobat that I just got randomly off of Cliff. It was really cool. Been pretty lucky when it comes down to these Shadow Hundos, because honestly, the Sableye, the Rhyperior, and the Crobat happened within like a month or two of each other. We got stupid lucky with these. Speaking of some of the rares Pokemon I have, these two right here are probably the rarest out of all my shinies for sure. They are 0% shinies. This one I got during the Calm Day Classic, so there was definitely boosted rates on it, but this Metagross was caught in 2018, and this was after the Community Day where the shiny was released. So this was a full odd shiny that I got before I had any Shundos. And just to show you how old this was, we didn't have this bar system at the time. We just had the leader telling us, hey, it's amazing, the attack, defense, HP, I'm blown away. They used to do that. They didn't show you these IVs like this. So when I caught this Beldum, it was like, hey, this is terrible. It's HP, it's attack, it's defense, it's all bad. I didn't know it was a 0% at the time because there was no full way to know until obviously the bar system came out and I saw this and this is 10 times rarer than any Shundo because there's only one way to get it and that's in the wild. You cannot trade for it because because minimum IVs you can get on a traded shiny is 111. You cannot raid for it because the minimum is 10, 10, 10, nor can you get it from research or any other way. And even then, when you catch them in the wild, they cannot be weather boosted because in the wild, a weather boosted Pokemon's minimum IVs is 222 or higher. So the fact that we got this and had them before any Shundos is pretty crazy. I'm also gonna just throw this in as an honorable mention. This is my oldest Hundo. And the reason why it's called the prize is I used to joke around with people all the time because I really wanted to get myself a whole bunch of magic Magikarps for a Gyarados. So people would be like, oh look, there's a Charmander on the nearby. And I'd be like, no, no, no. The real prize is right there. And I would always point to the Magikarp. So that's why it's called the prize. But yeah, I didn't even know this was a Hundo at the time. Cause again, you didn't really fully know, like you had good suspicions about it. But yeah, very glad that we got this thing. Cause yeah, I like Gyarados a lot. I'd say it's like my second favorite gen one Pokemon. When it comes down to the Galarian legendary birds, I've also had some pretty decent luck as you can see. My first ever one was this one that I caught in Taipei, Taiwan. One, and I was so happy to get it. This was my first one. I was so excited to finally catch one because I had caught so many prior and it just never worked out. You know what I mean? But then literally like not even a couple weeks later, we got the Galarian Articuno and this was in Tokyo, Japan. So like this little Asia trip I was doing was just going so well. And then a few months later, we finally catch our first Galarian Moltres. And I will say I'm happy I got this one, but this is not my favorite of the Galarian Moltreses. That would be this one. This is a level one Galarian Moltres. Ultras, which is a pretty rare thing. A level one legendary is a fun thing to get. They're pretty rare because you don't normally find them. And also, I got this one when I was in Egypt, literally leaving the airport, going to my hotel, and it was in the Uber slash car ride thing. And we got it on a pretty bad throw, I believe. I was just so happy to get it, especially because I did have a level one Galarian Articuno, and sadly that ran away on me. So I'm glad I got this one. And I'm Team Valor. It's a Moltres, yada yada. You know what I mean. I'm just, I'm really happy with it. My Zygarde is pretty bad when it comes down to the IVs. It is a 10, 11, 10, literally just one away from being the worst one possible, though I do believe that the worst before 10, 10, 10 would be 10, 10, 11. I think that's how it goes, where if it's on the tack, then it's a little higher, and if it was defense, it's a little higher, and then HP is like the lowest before 10, 10, 10. But I am happy to say that I do have enough cells in order to turn it into its final form, though I won't be doing that with this one. I actually kind of like where it's at, and it seems pretty decent for Great League, though it's not like amazing or anything like that. But I'm gonna 
gonna hold on to it as this form. I had it its dog form earlier and I changed it into this one relatively recently. But I'm mostly holding on to the cells until the shiny comes out or we get a better one somehow. I'm sure we'll get another one at some point in the future. Maybe Kalos Tor. I really hope it's not that far away, but I mean, I like this Pokemon a lot. It's a cool Pokemon, so hopefully we'll end up getting a better one. And this right here is a fun little thing that I'm working on. This is Hundo Regionals from all around the world. And so far we're doing pretty good with them. I've completed Gen 1, the Kanto region. I got this one in Kyoto. This one was from New York, which is crazy. I can't believe I got this. It was from a research as well. And then we also got ourselves the Mr. Mime from a trade, which was great. And then we got the Tauros also from a trade. So Gen 1 is complete. And I do believe Gen 2 is complete as well. We got this Heracross at home and we got the Corsal as well from home. And then Gen 3, we're doing really well with. I got this in Bali at the Pokemon Fun Run and it was great. I didn't even know it was a hundo until a little bit after the whole race and stuff like that. And it was such a huge surprise because I really wanted this so badly. And then recently I got myself the Ilumise as well. So yeah, we're, we're doing really good with these. Not only that, we also got our hands on the Torkoal. We got the hands on a Lunatone and Solrock and we got the Tropius and Relicanth. And I believe that's it for Gen 3. But then we got this guy also in Bali. I cannot believe we got this one. We didn't get it during the Air Adventures event. We didn't hatch it or get it in any researches during the LA Sinnoh tour. This was literally just on the side of the road while we were in an Uber ride to our hotel, which was crazy. And then we have a Carnivine here that is from a trade, which is nice, and it's from home. And then we got the Semi Sage, we've got the Semi Seer and the Semi Four. Technically, I probably should try to get their first stages as well, but I'm just kind of counting that I have the final forms as their Hondos. And then we've got ourselves the Throw, we got a Sock, we got Maractus, which is great. I got this Bouffalant in a random trade. It was literally like the first trade I did during an increased chance of having a lucky trade happen event. Like it was literally the first trade during that kind of event where they boost the odds of a lucky trade happening. And then we've got our hands on a heat more. We got the floor just yellow and the blue one. Got very lucky with this one from a research in Goyang, South Korea. And I think, no, there's also the Halucha. How could I completely forget about this Halucha? I really wanted this Halucha really badly. I love Halucha. I think it's great. I can't wait for its shiny to come out. It's just a really neat Pokemon. And the fact that we got this hundo is awesome. And then we've got the Oricorio, and I believe, yes, that is the last one. I do want to get the other forms of this Oricorio as hundos. I don't know if I'll be lucky with it. Like I mentioned about the shinies, they will be showing up during the future Go Fests in 2024, so fingers crossed we get lucky with those. I would like to get them just for my personal collection, because what I want to do is I want to have all of them at level 50 at some point, and I'd like to best buddy them as well, but this is something that's kind of taking the back burner right now. But speaking of best buddies, here they are. I honestly Honestly, could be working a little harder to get even more of these things, but I'm slowly working on a few of them at a time. But here they all are. We got the 0% Metagross. We got this one called Hondo Tokyo, which I got in front of a temple in Tokyo, like on the steps leading up to it. And this was before remote raids. I was so, so happy to get this. But yeah, I got this Kangaskhan, which I do believe is the first ever shiny Kangaskhan in the world. This came out literally on the day of the release of the shiny, and it was in my first batch of eggs. And this was at a time where the events wouldn't come out based on your time time zone, it would just drop for everybody at the same time. So I think that this is the first one ever because this came out of my second egg within like 35 to 40 minutes of the event going live. We went hard and it really worked out. But we got this shiny Mewtwo, Absol, the Hundo Shadow Salamance, Party Hat Wurmple, which took a lot, I mean a lot of eggs to hatch. We've got Ramen the Magikarp, which is a little honorable mention here. He's become like a little bit of an unofficial mascot of the channel. I use him all the time when it comes down to doing like getting candies with your buddy tasks and stuff. Plus, I like to eat ramen, as most of you guys know, so when I got this guy in the ramen restaurant, it was just like fate. My first ever shiny Chansey, a Hundo Lucario, a Garchomp Hundo, this Lickitung that I use for PvP, a Hundo Perserker, we got the Hundo Shadow Suicune, and the Shadow 96% Mewtwo that I got from GoFest. This is a shiny 98% Sharpedo. I want to get myself a Shundo at some point. It's a big goal. I love Sharpedo a lot. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. A lot of Shundos are best buddied in here, like the Porygon Z, but I also have the Rampardos, we got the Bouffalon, the Shlundo Kyogre, as you can see the Shundos. This Wobbuffet is actually really cool. This is a purified Hundo Wobbuffet, but the reason why this is great is because Wobbuffet only really knows Mirror Code as a charge move, but when you purify it, it gets returned, which makes it actually somewhat useful for PvP, and I've won a few games with just destroying people with a Wobbuffet. It's really funny. I really love this thing. Plus, I like the female Wobbuffet 
Boba Fett because of the lips. I just think it's kind of funny. But even more Shundos here, the Hundo Dialga, the Shadow Hundo Gardevoir. All of my Furfru forms are best buddied as well, including my first Galarian bird catches of each of them. And I am working on the Air Adventures Pikachus as well. And also my 0% there. Also this Hundo Goldango. How could I forget about this Hundo? This thing is actually done pretty well when it comes down to raids and such. And I really like that we have a Hundo of this thing with the lucky background. It looks really nice. And we have an extra, extra small Hundo of this little Munchlax here. Very glad I got this one just because it's fun as a really tiny little baby. Got a Hundo Zoroark as well. And that is pretty much everything that I've best buddied. But again, I'm working on quite a few of them. And I really want to get this Platinum Medal at some point in the future. And here are my level one legendary Pokemon. I got this Uxie in the wild. I got this Azelf as a shiny during the LA Sinnoh tour at the Rose Bowl Stadium, which I was so happy to get it. And my buddy Alex actually traded me the Mesperit, so I'm still looking for that shiny level one Uxie. I really want to complete this set. But not only that, we got the Moltres, like I mentioned earlier, from Egypt. This is just such a fun keepsake. Like, it's something really rare, but also something I'm just really glad I got, period. And then I got this shiny Latias from the Las Vegas Hoenn tour, which was a really fun one. I would love to get a Latios, though I think that the odds of finding one of those is going to be a lot harder. But really happy I got this one, because I really like Latias. I had Sapphire version in the very beginning when I was playing Pokemon Gen 3. So Latias was the Lottie I got in that game, so it's kind of fun to get this one for sure. And lastly, I'm going to show you my mythicals that aren't raidable, except for one of them is raidable. There's a few of them here, but they're mostly just supposed to be ones that we were only supposed to get one of, and then we got the shiny of later, or we got multiples of because of GoFest and stuff like that. Like, you'll understand the theme in a moment. Basically, no Dark Rise Deoxys or Genesex or anything like that. But let's just dive into them. So this was my first ever mythical. It was Mew, and it was a 10 12 10 it was not good the shiny one turned out to be a little better it's a 13 11 12 which is nice but then we move on to celebi this one is a 12 11 15 this is from the go fest the first ever time celebi came out and then next we have our other one that we were given which is a 10 11 14 not as good and then we got the shiny one which is the 14 11 10 followed up by jirachi which is a 10 14 13 which is actually pretty good for gray league i use it often and then the shiny which is a 12, 11, 14. Followed up by a Shaman. This is my first ever Shaman from Worldwide, but then we have a few of these. So we got this one. We then got this one from Berlin. We got this one from Seattle, Washington, which is almost literally the worst one. And then there's also this Shaman that we got here, which has the grass hidden power, which is pretty rare. So that's pretty exciting. And it's one of the better ones I have. But then after that, we got the shiny one. And then we got this Shaman. Huh, I wonder why it's going out of order like that. Doesn't really matter. But then we got this shaman as well and i believe that was also worldwide or maybe that was from a specific event where we got an extra one i think that's what that is and then there's victini which we got alongside of our first ever shadow mewtwo and it's all right 14 14 11 it's not really that amazing and then there's this keldeo that we got from a paid ticket which which was a 13 13 14 we then got ourselves a diancy from the osaka go fest and you only got one of those and this one was a 10 15 13 i'm hoping that maybe it'll be good for great or ultra league let's just see what great league would have been Nah, unfortunately not. How about Ultra League? Where are you at for Ultra League? Oh, Ultra League's not bad. 2498. That's pretty good. And then we have this Hoopa, which is the first one I ever got. And then we had Elite Raids for Hoopa. This is actually my best one. The rest of them are all, unfortunately, kind of trash when it comes down to their IVs. But it was cool that they were in Elite Raids for a while. And I was hoping to get that Hundo, but we were never lucky enough for that. Then we got Zarude, which this was my first one. The 15, 15, 12. Pretty good. And then this is the second one we got this year, which is a 13, 15. 15, 13, which is not bad, all things considered. It's actually pretty up there. But yeah, that's all of them. Minus, obviously, Genesec, Darkrai, and the other rateable ones, but these are the ones that I feel are more rare, comparatively. And that's my entire collection of Pokemon Go, or at least a good portion of it. Obviously, there's things that I wasn't able to show. But let me know in the comments down below what you would have liked to have seen that you didn't see in this video, and I might be able to add it to a future video. And also, don't forget to smash that subscribe button for me. Show me some love. Again, we're trying to hit 200k subscribers, and we're getting very, very close. So if you haven't already, subscribed, please do. And if you're really enjoying the content and you want to see even more of it, I highly suggest this video over here. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.